RTS link will change life for the better for many families of both countries. Which I am here, which I am motivated to give RTS top priority in my responsibility as the Minister of Transport. I have been monitoring closely and keeping tab on each project milestones and I communicate with my Singapore counterparts frequently on this project, focused and determined to keep the project delivered on time. As of 30 of April 2023, the overall progress of the railway infrastructure has reached 36%, which is one third of the project. For the marine wider portion, where we are visiting today, the actual progress is 30%. Construction has started on the ground, we are on track to meet the target milestone. Malaysia remains fully committed to the delivery of RTS team. Working closely with Singapore, we are confident to complete the project in full by 31st of December 2026 in accordance to the bilateral agreement signed between Malaysia and Singapore. It's a very important opportunity for us to understand better the progress and also to discuss ideas on mutual cooperation. Specifically, Mr. Lok and I had a wide-ranging discussion and we affirmed our commitment to strengthening our bilateral ties. And importantly, we also looked at how we can further enhance our transport connectivity through air, sea and land initiatives. And in particular, of course, our Johor Singapore Rapid Transit System network. I'm very happy to hear from our Malaysian counterparts and as you've heard from Mr. Lok, that works are on track to achieve timely completion on the Malaysian side. On the Singapore side, works on the Singapore side of the RTS link are progressing well, and we have completed about 50% of civil construction works for both the overall railway infrastructure and marine viaduct. In short, based on the progress that's being achieved on both sides, we expect to be ready on time for commencing passenger services by the end of 2026. The next significant milestone is when the drop-in span connecting both sides of the viaduct is completed and both our Prime Ministers will be commemorating this event early next year. Just for the benefits of the Singapore media, I was asked about uh, whether or not we discussed the high-speed rail project. Uh, yes, we did. Uh, we did discuss about the way forward and I, on behalf of the Malaysian government, I have made it very clear that uh, we are keen to revive the project, uh, but the model of implementation must be based on a private sector-led uh, initiative, or PFI. Uh, so we are open to suggestions and proposals from the private sector, and uh, likewise, I think that uh, we have to continue to engage each other and to further discuss the way forward on this particular project. In addition to what uh, Minister Lok has said, I took the opportunity to underscore again Singapore's readiness to study any proposal from Malaysia on how the HSR project can be restarted. So we remain open and we are ready to work with the government of Malaysia to study any new proposals. Earlier you mentioned about how you both are discussing bilateral cooperation in terms of uh, enhancing transport connectivity. Um, what steps are being done uh, to ease traffic congestion at the land borders, at least until the RTS Well, I think uh, there's a whole range of measures that are being taken. Uh, the key things would be around the CIQ processing in order to facilitate the flows. We also have public transport connectivity. And in general, the two sides are studying to see and at the officials level what else can be done uh, in the interim as we build up to the RTS. The RTS itself will allow for about 10,000 passengers per hour to connect between Johor Bahru and Singapore. And on the Singapore side, they will then be able to, through the public concourse, link up with the Woodlands North uh, station of the Thompson East Coast Line. But between now and then, we need a variety of solutions and both sides are committed to exploring and seeing how we can facilitate smoother flows, beginning with CIT operations. Well, uh, likewise, uh, yes, while well, we are waiting for the completion of RPS, uh, both uh, governments are committed to look at uh, short-term solutions on how to ease the congestion.
congestions at the causeway. On the Malaysian side, uh, we take this very seriously. In fact, we have a cabinet, com cabinet committee, uh, especially for this uh, matter, and we are looking at uh, various means and methods to ease the congestions. At the causeway, uh, first of all, we want to make sure that all our counters are fully operational uh, during peak hours. And I think uh, I have to commend our Minister Musa of Johor, uh, the one office, which has been very, very proactive uh, and uh, taking the personnel, uh, uh, taking it upon himself to make sure that everything uh, runs smoothly on the ground. And he has been making a lot of spot checks uh, almost on a daily basis, which uh, I think is something commendable. Uh, besides that, uh, I think uh, at the government level, we will try to look at how to ease the process in terms of uh, freedoms of immigration and customs. That will be continuous uh, improvement on that score. Besides that, uh, Mr. Iswaran and I also mentioned and discussed about uh, whether or not uh, on the possibilities of adding more connectivities between both borders. I think this is something that we will further discuss, uh, not just on Land transport. We are looking at uh, even ferry services to connect uh, both countries. And uh, I also raise up uh, and request uh, the Singapore's government uh, consideration uh, to add on to the uh, current uh, Tobrak shuttle train services between both countries.